Hey, what's up guys? This is BNB and another YouTube tutorial. As usual, I'm making a learning tutorial to show you how to make some cool electronics stuff. And talking about electronics, this tutorial will take us back to one of the basics of electronics, which is how to master the through hole soldering. So if you ever face it, a troubles with soldering your components, solder wire dripping, components getting burned, well, no more worries, because in this video, I will teach you whatever you have to know about how soldering works. So let's get started. As always, we start with the necessary tools. And as we all know, a great work needs the use of great tools. The task is so simple and all what you need is a solder iron. And it's important to know how the solder iron works and how to use it properly and securely. It's a kind of hot metallic or ceramic resistance that could reach more than 400 Celsius degrees in a short period of time in order to molten the solder wire. This is a dangerous tool that we are using in this video, so please be careful when you take this soldering iron in your hands to avoid any sort of accidents. I'm using this pretty soldering station. It has a soldering iron already. Just one more information about the soldering iron, which is the solder tips. It has, it's that part that get in contact with the solder wire and the electronic component. And there is many kind of solder tips. You have to pick one depending on the component you want to solder. There is some thin tips for thin component food and larger ones for larger component food. The second tool is the solder wire or the core wire. And also there is many types of solder wire depending on the task. The wire is made out of several different metal alloys that creates a soldering joint when melted. So each solder wire types is made of specific composition, but overall they fall into two categories, lead and lead free. Lead free wire is more popular today because it causes less pollution. It's more expensive, but not necessarily better. Anyway, I advise you to use the lead free wire for a better appearance of your soldering and I also advise you to choose the suitable diameter of the soldering wire, which is between 0.7 and 0.8 millimeters. Choose a wire with a flux in its core. It's simpler to use because you want to have to add additional flux after soldering. The third tool is needed once you combine the solder iron and the soldering wire. I'm talking about the brass wire since burning flux leaves dark marks on the soldering spot and on the tip of the soldering iron. You will need to clean the tip to remove these stains. This used to be done with a moist sponge, but these days a brass wire is preferred. The reason we don't use a sponge anymore is simple yet important. It cools off the iron too fast. Repeated exposure to this kind of temperature shock will wear out the iron tip more quickly. These are the basic tools that you need in order to start your first soldering try. But there is other tools that you may need like the flux which is used to clean the soldering spot and to clean the PCB solder mask. A third hand is needed also and it will be like a kind of support for you while soldering the electronic components. You could also need a digital microscope to check the soldering spots after performing the soldering task. Before moving to our first practicing assignment, here is a picture that shows how to place the component in its placement on the PCB and how to take the soldering iron and the solder wire. The secret to successful soldering is to heat up everything at the same time. The solder wire, the soldering spot and the component. I'm using in this project a PCB that I've ordered from GLC PCB for one of my previous projects which is a CNC plotter machine. You can find in the description down below the video's link. And also, you can refer to GLC PCB website if you want to order any PCB design you make. Just upload the gerber file of the appropriate design and set some parameters like the PCB thickness, quantity, and color. By the way, no matter what the color you select, the price will be the same for any color you choose. There is an important parameter that you have to set regarding your design, which is the PCB layers. I'm using here two layers PCB, that means I can solder my components from both sides of the PCB. Starting the soldering task, and as I told you, we need first to set the soldering iron tip.
and then we heat it up. Once it's ready to use, you can notice that the soldering wire is molten easily. We clean the soldering tip and we place the components one by one. So I will solder this IC socket which has 60 pins. Before moving for further steps, do not forget to put some glasses to protect your eyes from the smoke of the burned flux. We heat up the socket foot and the soldering spot. Then once we close the car wire, the molten soldering takes its placement above the spot to cover the whole spot surface and to connect the component foot to the circuit spot. Once we zoom in in the process, you can see that this is easy to do if you are using the right tools the right way. Do the same for the rest of your components and then you can clean the PCB spots with a flux and after this, you have your PCB soldered and ready for action. As you see guys, through hole soldering is no longer a secret now, so you can master it yourself. I will post another tutorial about how to solder surface mounted devices or SMD devices using SMD workstation, so stay tuned for the next tutorial. Do not forget to watch our previous project video which is Arduino MIDI controller and to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome videos. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was BMB from Megadas. See you next time.